welcome back, Hello, everybody. And welcome back. So today we are going to be talking about ketchup. Ketchup, ketchup. another important subject yes. that we need to address. We talked about hot dogs, and today we're going to do ketchup specifically. So we love ketchup. We love to put it on stuff. We do. We love do. Ketchup. We love it. Or um, cats up. Yes. Depending yes. on how you say it. Right. You can say it either way. <laughs> But uh, today what we're going to be doing is we're going to share a little bit of history on ketchup and then we're actually having a guest on virtually and they're going to talk about ketchup and a few other things and it's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to learn a whole lot of stuff about ketchup. Yeah, and then some other stuff. So I guess we can start with the history of, uh, of ketchup and where it came from. <clears throat> so uh, at the beginning, ketchup was actually not really made with tomatoes. It did not start that Who way. Who right? No. So... The word ketchup is borrowed from the Chinese word, um, which is, I hope I'm saying this right, kit I, I might be saying that wrong, it's, it's a weird word. <laughs> um, but that's where the word comes from, meaning a pickled fish sauce. This uh, mixture was mainly added to recipes to season a dish instead of being served as a condiment. It is believed that this fish sauce came from uh, Vietnam and went to the southeastern part of China, where it became a standard food item. From there, it traveled to Malaysia and Indonesia, where its name morphed into, which I hope I'm saying these right, ketchup and ketchup. Ketchup, chup chup, I don't know. It's something like that. <laughs> They're, uh, they're, they're pretty similar to the word ketchup. There's just little variations. Yeah, little variations. Um, then the 17th century English sailors discovered this tasty Chinese seasoning and brought it west where cooks tried to copy the, uh, the dark sauce. As the Chinese version uh, is similar to Worcestershire sauce, British, I love that word by the way. I love that word. Worcestershire, or what's this here sauce? <laughs> you could say also that. another way to say it. Um, because of that, the British used um, ingredients such as anchovies, oysters, mushrooms, and walnuts to recreate these flavors. Because of that, ketchup came to mean a condiment consisting of mushrooms. Huh, how about that? So now we have to talk about the addition of the tomato, because yeah. that's what we define ketchup as. True. So the English settlers brought this mushroom ketchup to America, where it continued to gradually go through various changes. One significant change was the addition of tomatoes, which first appeared in a recipe by Sandy Addison in 1801 in the Sugar House book. The recipe called for squeezing the tomatoes dry and then salting and boiling them. After pressing through a sieve, the tomato is combined with mace, nutmeg, allspice, cloves, cinnamon, ginger, and pepper to taste. It is then boiled until thick, cooled, and bottled. The bottled ketchup will last for several years due to the amount of salt, which also made the ketchup taste very salty. Yep. Imagine yep. that. <laughs> because tomatoes are part of the Solanaceae family, which consists of certain poisonous plants, many people used to avoid eating fresh tomatoes, but were willing to eat the ketchup since the red fruit was cooked and preserved with other ingredients. With this, the popularity of bottled ketchup began. Yeah, and I, I've heard that before. The people actually used to be really scared of eating tomatoes. They thought they were really poisonous. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, Heinz was actually not the first company to bottle and sell ketchup. Imagine that! Yeah. Heinz. Yeah. Uh, so a farmer named Jonas Yerkes was the first person to bottle and sell ketchup, and by 1837 he was selling it nationally. It wasn't until around 40 years later that the F&J Heinz company began selling tomato ketchup, and by the end of the 19th century, Heinz was the main type of ketchup in the United States. Gradually, the word tomato in tomato ketchup was dropped from Heinz's name, but the name did always stay on the bottle itself. So originally, unripe tomatoes were used, which required the use of a preservative called sodium benzoate uh, to prevent it from spoiling and losing some of its flavor. But in the early 1900s, the Food and Drug Administration banned the use of this additive, and Heinz began making their ketchup with ripe tomatoes instead, which contained more of the natural preservative called pectin, and adding sugar and vinegar to it as well. Due to the increased amount of pectin, the newer ketchup became much thicker than the past um, ketchup. It was very, I guess, a lot more watery without it. So over the years, ketchup has changed from the bottle to the large pump, though the bottle does still exist. Usually it's, still, it's only in like restaurants. That's still in place I see. Yeah. Did you know the trick? If you want to get it to come out of a glass bottle, you're supposed to tap the 57. Yeah, I've heard glass. that. No. I think it does work. Instead of like shaking it, you right. go tap, tap, tap. 
<laughs> right. Um, and they also turned into small packets and even short-lived selections of different colors of ketchup using food dye, which I, I saw, I remember the purple one, and people actually thought it tasted different. It was like a psychological thing. Yeah. And they, they said they think. didn't change the flavor, but I think I even tried some of the colored ones, and it was, it was weird. It did taste different. Yeah, so they it didn't last long no. because of that. <laughs> so that is what we have for the part of the um, history of the There ketchup. you go. Yeah. Now you'll know when Kinda you put that on your hamburger or whatever, you'll know. Right. Um, but now we are going to go to a, a little interview and a little talk with uh, a guest we're having on virtually. Very excited. We can head over there. Hello there. Hi. How are you doing? How are you today? Fine, thank you. How are you today? Oh, I'm inside. I don't think I'm going to need this. <laughs> okay. Yay. Yay. Okay. So, do you mind if we introduce you to everyone? Oh, go right ahead. Go okay. Right ahead. <laughs> so, this is, uh, her name is Miss Anonymous, and she's going to be on today to talk about why Chicagoans don't put ketchup on their That's hot dogs. That's right, because yeah. everyone needs to know. Right, right. So, uh, I guess we can get started on what you wanted to tell about Chicago and, and why, why they do this, why they just put mustard on. Oh, first of all, girls, I just want to say how thrilled I am to be here today. <laughs> I am tickled pink. I am pleased as punch, don't you know? Yay. You two are... You two are my favorite YouTube celebrities on the YouTube machine. <laughs> I'm just so excited to get to know you a little bit, don't you know? Oh, okay. we're so glad so, you're here. Yeah, oh, it's awesome. an honor. It's an honor and a pleasure and a thrill, a secret thrill for my whole life. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, now, down to business. Okay. Let's talk about this serious subject at hand. Okay, serious. Okay. Ketchup. Yeah. Ketchup. Ketchup on a hot dog. Well, I'm here to clarify things for the entire world on what that means in Chicago. Okay. okay, first of all, it's a little bit complicated. First of all, if you have a naked hot dog in a bun, don't you know, and you want to put ketchup on it, we may go, okay, you know, do your thing, whatever that is, and enjoy that. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a specific thing here. And the specific thing we're talking about is a Chicago dog. Okay, what is a Chicago right. what is a Chicago dog you ask? Funny that you would ask that. Oh my oh, wow, diagram? That. Goodness. We have a diet. This is the anatomy of the Chicago dog. <laughs> okay. If you must know. okay, we start with a, this is the Chicago dog. We start with the poppy seed roll. The bun is a poppy seed with an all beef, preferably Vienna beef, mm -hmm. hot dog in there. Okay, and then you have your regular expected things like chopped up onions, and then there's two wedges of tomatoes and yellow mm -hmm. mustard, and then there's a dill pickle spear, and these little things called sport peppers. Okay, those, 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 and then finally there's two more things. One is the relish, and it's called neon relish. It's like bright green. Don't ask me. It's just a Chicago oh, thing. Okay. And okay. when everything's assembled, then you sprinkle celery salt on it, don't you know? So that's it. This is a Chicago dog. Now, this is a symphony of flavors. It's perfection to the palate. If you add ketchup to this, you destroy it. This is it. It's like saying, well, in Pittsburgh, yins. <laughs> Yins. Yeah, I know that word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yin, yins guys. Yins guys. You you have this thing called a dump sandwich where they put the cat they, they put the French fry and a coleslaw That's in right. the sandwich. Yep. What would happen if you squirted whipped cream in there? This is what I'm talking well, about. That would ruin that, ketchup, yeah, that. That makes yeah. sense. That's it. You put ketchup on this, it's over. It's over. So <laughs> that is what it's all about. Yeah, that's and interesting so, because I've always thought of a Chicago dog with just like some onions and maybe some mustard, but that's that looks like really good with all the other stuff. That's decked on out. It. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, decked out. And that's it. And you ask anybody from Chicago, they will know that down to the celery salt, don't you know? That's the way it goes. That was like the definition, ex explanation, and how it all makes sense that Chicago, we're not going to throw you out of the city if you bring some ketchup in the room darn tootin'. No, we wouldn't do that, my gosh. 
We're too civilized for that. But you go and you mess with our Chicago dog, that's another matter, oh, don't you? Okay, oh I see. Okay. Okay. Uh. okay. Now, did you have another question for me before? I have one more thing to say after this. And Did you have a question for me? We did. We did. If you yes. want to ask that So we question. have one more question. So we hear that you are related to a Mr. Anonymous. Who was on the show a little bit ago. And we're wondering what happened there. What, are you still in contact with Mr. Anonymous? Well, girls, enough time has passed. I guess I can talk about this. Okay. okay. For Pete's sake, it was not a good time. Not a good time at all. My cousin, Mr. Anonymous, now first of all, off the grid. He's not off the grid. Okay. I'm what they call off the grid. Really? Oh. That's a he goes down to the CVS every other day to pick up his supplies. <laughs> An arm a thing, a three mile long grabber. I mean, he's funny. He's a funny guy with the joke. Always the jokester. Always with his sm moths named Steve and whatever <laughs> not. Anyway, he's funny. He's funny. But what he doesn't get is sometimes in humor there is a line. And you do not cross the line. You don't. And he does? You, he think does. He, you think he crosses the line? He historically always crosses that line. And one time, it was one time too many. And it was about the year 2012. It had nothing to do with the Mayan calendar, don't you know? <laughs> it had to do with me. He's hiding from me. And you know why? Why? Can you guess? What? He put ketchup on a Chicago <gasps> Oh, no! Wow. He crossed the line, Buster. Wow. Oh, I was so mad. Oh, he goodness. got my goat. It was, gu gully, it was awful. It was such a row. Oh, it almost came to fisty cuffs. I was so mad. He did it gleefully. He opened that pack. He snuck the ketchup in. There wasn't even a bottle. He took it out of his pocket, a pocket. And he opened it and poured it on a Chicago dog. And I said, no, that's it. And I, I, I just yelled at the top of my lungs, no tapioca for you tonight, Buster. And I left and slammed the door and never spoke to him again. Wow. So wow. That's, that's, I know. We it was didn't rough. know that it about him. That's dramatic. Oh, my yeah. goodness. He's a funny guy, but there's a line that you don't cross. And, and he, he did. crossed the ketchup he line. Yeah, yes. he Oh, for it. Pete's oh, sake, I tell you. Well, goodness me, in these days, you know, it's at the pandemic time. Oh, by the way. Who gives a crap is a charitable organization that makes toilet paper from recycle. <laughs> recycled paper, 100% recycle, and they give 50% of their proceeds to people who need toilets, which is a very nice well, thing. Well, that's, that's very nice. nice. Yeah, very it is nice very nice. That's, that's my little plug for the... So back to the pandemic. Okay, so in a pandemic time, this is what we do. We stop and reflect upon the past, and we think, well, maybe it's time to let some bygones be bygones, because after all, our whole health, the world is topsy-turvy and it everything is, yeah. is poppycock. It really is. And so <laughs> at the end of the day, I've decided that cousin, if you're up, did I tell you also his name is, his? I want me to tell you his name? Our last his name? name is Anonymous. He's oh. Mr. Anonymous, because that's that our last name. We had fun with that. Oh, okay. That's my last name, too. Our fathers were brothers. You know, all that stuff. So he so. really wasn't worried about his privacy all along. We thought no. he was. No, just his he name. was afraid. He was afraid of me. Wow. So, anyway, okay. Sweet. So, but at the end of the day, everything is poppycock. And I can't hold a grudge anymore And when he crossed the line. And so if you're out there, cousin, feel free to contact me. I hold no grudges. You're forgiven. And you can put ketchup on whatever you want. The bygones are bygones. Oh, so, that is nice. Well, that's nice of you. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's, it takes us things like a pandemic to help, you know, straighten out these there kind of situations. There you go. Right. Okay, so one more thing that I wanted to share with you. Some people say that, that... Well, I'm not going to use the H word. Harder. I'm, some people call me a pack rat because oh I like collecting things. And I prefer to co think of myself as a collector, okay. you know, not a pack rat. And I just can't believe what I stumbled across in my collection. You're never going to believe this. What? But I have an empty easy squirt bottle no way wow. it's the blue green look at Wait, that. this is a green one this one is the blasting green oh, i know wow. i just 
I know, and this is almost 20 years old. This is a long time ago. And I just didn't have the heart to throw them away. And now they've been discontinued and it just breaks my heart. And look at this, I got a purple one too. It's oh called, my wow. goodness. It's called Funky Purple. And look what else, I have a blue one wow. too. Wow. I know, and this one's called, this is called Stellar Blue. And my favorite was this isn't rainbow, it's <gasps> mystery color. Oh, <laughs> mystery wow. color. That is so These cool. are like ancient relics. I'm amazed. They are. Yeah. they are, they are. And I'll tell you what, the reason I saved them was for this very moment. You know? Wow. I told you, you I'd just use knew. it someday, yes. and I'm using it today. Now, one last thing before we... I thought, I wonder if there's any more of these out there in the internet web world. And so I went and looked on the internet web and I found that you can buy a t-shirt with it on but they're they really it's not readily you can't find them out you there but them. You, can, you can find them on eBay right now this week there's two listings on eBay don't you know <laughs> one of them has an unopened bottle of green and look how much he's selling that for $90 90 wow. that is crazy uh, and $10 <laughs> shipping that's a hundred dollars and look at this one someone else has a purple one a hundred and fourteen fifth ninety nine a hundred and fourteen dollars over a hundred dollars I know because it's it's an unopened bottle and they are out there selling them for a hundred dollars and you know what I have one of those too. Look at this. You're not going to believe it. It's unopened. Oh, You've got that. like a gold mine there. This that is, is worth cool. $100. Wow. I know. <laughs> this is going to be my in the inheritance I leave my daughter, Mia, I see. because, you know, that that's it. This is about all I have to give to you, Mia. I hope that you know <laughs> that I love you. Okay, the green so ketchup. That, yeah, no. So that's what I have to offer today to share about about ketchup. And now it's time for you two to open the mystery yes, box. Yes, this is okay. very exciting. Yeah. So we have a mystery box. We do from yes. this anonymous. You dropped it. And off that's for because us. I wanted to say thank you for inviting me on the show. It's a little gesture of thanks, don't you know? Well, it's thank just, you so much for coming yeah. on. This was so much well, fun. Mm -hmm. I am just yeah. pleased as punch. Oh, open the present. Open the okay, present. All right. Okay, we'll open it here. Let's see here okay what's it gonna be all right let's see what oh, we got okay look look at the box look it's vienna bees okay <laughs> <laughs> let's see what is this oh look at that <laughs> it's That's chicago the relish. style relish <laughs> that is awesome it's neon. It's look neon. at the color look at how bright that <laughs> is wow, that is i've never seen relish wow. that bright before that's awesome. That. <laughs> you can't find that in Pittsburgh. Oh, no way, no way, buddy. No. no yeah, no. that is, is from cool. Chicago. <laughs> from Chicago. All right. right. Oh, yellow and mustard. Vienna mustard. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. It's a special kind. <laughs> yes. Just for Chicago dogs. We're ready Great. for a, a Chicago hot dog. Let's for see. For sure. I think there's a theme here. I think so. Oh, yes, there this is. is for peppers. <laughs> we got the peppers. Nice. Oh, you can't find those in Pittsburgh. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. For They're pizza. cute. Oh, Look at the little. Those are cute. They are, cute. are they yeah. spicy? Or are they yes. just. Yes. They are. Okay. okay. All yes. right. One last thing here. One more. All right. And we got celery sauce. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now we've got so everything now, we need. We do. Now you can make your own Chicago dog. Oh, right. set. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate well, it. We will have well, to do it and, and eat it. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for inviting me to be on your show. It was such an honor getting to know you two. <laughs> oh, yeah. <Yay. Yay. laughs> well, thank okay, you so then. much. I appreciate this. Oh, thank this. you. I really appreciate spending this time with you. And maybe someday we can do it again. Yes. Yeah, and we will let you know what we think of the hot dog. We will. See. Okay, yeah, yeah, you can send me a text in the text machine. That sounds good. Good. We will, okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, have a happy day. All and right, you too. Thank you again. By gum, by golly, this was a blast. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a blast for us, too. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay, right. we'll see you later. Bye-bye.
Well, thank you so much for coming on, Miss Anonymous. Yay! Really appreciate it. We had a lot of fun. That thank was you so fun. much. Yeah. So we hope uh, she'll definitely come back on in other for times. Sure. Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, but now it is time for the news. Good afternoon, and thanks for tuning in. There is currently a poll going on right now to see if ketchup should be put on scrambled eggs or not. Please comment your answers below. And we are currently doing a poll on whether it should be on mac and cheese or not. Make sure to check it out in the link below. And now it is time for the Taylor Treasure Box. Is it gonna be full of ketchup? Nope. No ketchup. Maybe. It's not open yet. I don't know. Ah. Nope. Nope. Okay. Question for me: Do you like Star Wars or Marvel better? <laughs> Star Wars. Star Wars. Is that even a question? Well, Marvel's still good though. I like Marvel. Mm. Star Wars wins. <laughs> okay. Uh, would you rather live in a house in the ocean or in the sky? Hmm, it's an interesting question. That is interesting. What kind would you be talking about, though? It'd be like a... <laughs> Look at you're asking. What kind would you be talking about? Like, you well, I'm thinking like these questions, right? No, I know. <laughs> but I'm like, would it be, like, with the ocean one, would you just be, like, on the ocean, or would it be, like, a submarine kind of thing? Because I wouldn't want to be in the sky. So I guess the ocean. I think it means in the ocean. Like, you have to be immersed in it. Hmm. That's how I read it. I guess in the ocean, because I don't like heights. Yeah. Yeah. I think I would do that. Cool. Yeah. Um, so again, we hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you again to Miss Anonymous for coming on. Uh, we really yes. appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. Um, and you can also give this video a like, any comment, and you, subs you can subscribe. Please and do. after you subscribe, make sure to press the bell to get all of our videos in your notifications box. You can also follow us um, on Instagram and Facebook, which is at Taylor Treasures Official. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching that episode. If you'd like to subscribe Thank you. down here, you can smash subscribe. that button like subscribe. it's a bottle of ketchup and you're trying to get it on your hamburger. You can also watch another video over here, a Please random do. video. You can watch that and check out our channel. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.